So I'd like to talk a little bit about something in current events. The Texas abortion man, the heartbeat law. You know, uh, if you keep up with the latest social media craze, it seems to be now that women are refusing to have sex because the abortion law is so repugnant to them. Which is very interesting because it almost is a pro-life argument because at least people that are centered with faith will tell you not to have sex unless you expressly are willing to, you know, take on the challenges of, of the potential consequences of the action. So in essence, that their ban on sex is very really a pro-life stance because at least children in the womb won't be aborted if there's no chance of impregnation. Interesting. It's just a very weird world where people who are against something that saves a life are willing to deny something which will inevitably save a life because the life won't be formed in the first place. It's just uh, the strange world in which we live today. You know, it seems that this pandemic, as it keeps going, it, it just, it's destroying humanity in so many ways. It's not like that men and women were so easily coming together, as it were. Men and women are being further wedged against each other because of, you know, six feet of separation. I, I even heard a story that couples that are married, some men aren't willing to take off the mask when they're intimate with their wives. This just boggles my mind. You know, does that mean that you sleep in separate beds? I mean, are we going back to the days of Ozzy and Harriet? Again, I just... I'm blessedly single for all these reasons. It's just comical the way the world is going. I can't wait for the, uh, the days when we're going to have androids with artificial wombs. I mean, th this is where we're heading. I mean, it's not so, you know, crazy to think of the science fiction that's right around the corner with the depravity of man. You have to wonder if we are left to our own devices. Where will society be in the next 10, 15 years? Personally, I, I don't think we'll make it that long. We will probably fall off into an abyss pretty soon as far as economics. I mean, I'm not seeing a bright and rosy picture with the way that the world is currently operating during this pandemic. And then let's talk about the ideas of liberty and freedom. You know, it's uh, kind of scary. I, I'm, I don't know if you guys know this, but I am a huge fan of George Orwell. In fact, uh, not only am I uh, an avid reader of 1984, I try to read it every couple of years but down and out in london and paris is also one of those books that is formulative for for my uh, taste in literature and it's it's almost a prophetic book i guess not prophetic prophetic is the wrong word i believe prognostication by means of the mind and the imagination and just being astute and observing where humanity was heading, Orwell was able to understand this nightmare that we're living through. 
Um, if you do not follow the protocols of Big Brother, what is happening? Even major party leaders, you know, a prime example would be former President Trump. He can't be on social media. And let's not even go into CNN being the, the, the I, I can't remember, was the 10 minutes of hate or the hour of hate, but it, I mean, it was a 24 seven hate fest with people screaming and foaming at the mouth with hatred against him as a leader. It was like Emmanuel Goldstein and Trump could have been like intertwined as the same person. You know, uh, it's just, if you've read these books and you know what I'm talking about, it's comical. It's comical that we have these phones that we carry everywhere and it's like a telescreen. And seriously, it's a telescreen. It tracks where we go. It pings all the corporate interests, what our habits are. It listens to us so that it can better serve us as we buy stuff. It even acts as a form of payment when we wave our phone and do an Apple Pay or a Venmo. This little telescreen, handheld telescreen that goes everywhere. There are only a few people who haven't grabbed one of these smartphones because, let, let's face it, the sum total of human knowledge and wisdom is contained in one of these little boxes. And in fact, you can elocute perfectly. You can give great speeches. You can be very productive. And you can answer any question with just a few taps of your thumbs. But what has it done for mankind if all the electricity was gone tomorrow? We would be stupid. We would be ignorant. We wouldn't have any wisdom. The, the wisdom that we would have would, would barely be able to get us through a day without, without electricity, without being provided for us or being told what we should want and be provided with. You know, I, I recently wrote a, a small piece about the trophies of this world where I examined each one. I, I have had a long, hard thought about an old hymn called that old, rugged that old Rugged Cross. And one of the lines is, till at last all my trophies I lay down. And it's a beautiful description of laying down all of your trophies in this world at that old rugged cross. And exchanging all this things that this world has to offer for the crown of life, which is belief in Christ. What are the trophies of this world? Well, They're as meaningful as children, and they are as insignificant as a job title. They are as meaningful as a holiday event with your loved ones all around as you blow out a birthday cake candle to a cup of coffee in your favorite place where the barista knows your name. It's that perfect vacation that we have to share with everyone in the world, how wonderful it was. To envying that same vacation and wondering when it's your turn to live life. You know, I, I believe it's Ecclesiastes says that it is good for a man to enjoy the fruit of his labor 
And at the end of the day, that's all we have. We work, we live, we toil under this sun, and we don't have that. We don't have a long time. So it is, it is good, and, and the graciousness and blessing and provision of God that we have days, hours, and moments to cherish. Because even in the cherish, cherishing these things, we only have a small time to cherish them. And those memories, if you're lucky, you'll take them to that last few moments of your breath. Most people I see, memories fade, are forgotten. Paper turns to brown, tan, and ages, and then crumples to dust. And even data, even videos, all of them go by the wayside. The only thing that is eternal is your soul and what you did to help other people understand that there is only one way and there is only one way to eternity that is worth living and that is through the messiah jesus christ uh, so sorry for my rant but back to the topic of abortion um yeah the the texas law is, is a great step forward now do I think that it's going to lead to an overturning of Roe v. v. Wade? Not a chance. I, I, I wish I could be a little bit more optimistic, but somehow I, I think that people that worship death and worship harvesting embryonic stem cells and tissues from aborted fetuses their lobby is way too powerful and there's too much money to be made for there to be a cessation of the very real Holocaust of children. And if it was just the children in the womb that were being killed and being completely um, commercialized, that would be one thing. But there's so many other ways that they're using your children to make fortunes. Anyway, the, the, the only future we have are in that next generation. And we'll be judged by how we treat them, how we treat the ones that came before. And those creatures that are put into our care. Anyway, have a wonderful evening, wonderful Tuesday morning. And um, thank you for being a patron here at The Skeptical Partisan. This is The Skeptical Partisan signing off. Have a good night.